being that I'm self-taught and you went to college to uh, for art, yeah. um, what are some things that that you wish that you didn't learn? Because <laughs> that's one of the things that I run across that I'm glad that I don't I don't have to worry about nobody critiquing my work because I have the excuse <laughs> as fuck I didn't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like like dimensions, right? Right. I'm just painting them how I see it, and I feel like. The way I'm doing it is the purest form of me as an artist. Mm -hmm. So being that you were taught certain things, like what are, like what are some things that you could you would keep, and what some some of the things that you would give away. I think a lot of the things that I would keep from school was, um, for me, school was kind of like a map. When I went to uh, when I went to Bowling Green State University uh, to go for art, I was going for painting and drawing. I didn't really, I, there, there was a point in my life where I had like no idea, you know, what I wanted to do, what I was trying to do. And I knew I liked to draw, I knew I liked to, to paint, um, but I didn't know whether or not that could be like a career or anything mm -hmm. like that. When I went to school, um, I took one class, which was a called Contemporary Concepts. So basically it's like a class, like a free for all. You paint whatever you want. You just have to have like uh, a subject behind it. You have to have mm -hmm. an idea behind it. And I took that one class and I was just like, yeah, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Oh. <laughs> so that helped me in a way, just kind of set a bit of a path. I think the things that I would take away from school as as far as like for me I think that depending on what school that you go to there kind of becomes this like you know method of painting where it's like you know you're painting a lot like your professors because mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily like because that's what they're teaching you but that's how they paint so you kind of you know it's like little brother big brother you mm -hmm. know and you start seeing that and you're like oh that's what I want I want to paint like I went to a school that did, did mostly hyper-realist paintings where, like, you know, you get it close to a photo. And I, it took me, like, I, I would say, like, two years to figure out that that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, you get out of school, and, and for me, I was like, yeah, I just, I want to make a mess. I want to yeah. <laughs> yeah, get, like, so really... I just do you. Exactly. Like, back to that, um, that childlike state mm -hmm. of, because when we was children... And nobody was teaching us anything. We was able to just paint or sketch, sketch how we interpret, right. interpret like how how we thought it should already look. Exactly. You know, just like when you was writing your name for the first time, mm -hmm. you was writing the J. I was writing the J backwards, <laughs> but in my head, that's how it was supposed to look. Right. Right. You know, and I feel like uh, that's one of the things that I noticed. Um, a lot of people, even with fashion, mm -hmm. they'll say the same thing. Like, you know, it was it's harder to go to s college for some of those things mm -hmm. because you want to just be yourself. You right. want to do it the way you want to do it. Right. You know, you just want to find out certain things. You want to research things on your own. And research for us as an artist is more of experiment. Exactly. You know. And and yeah, I mean, I think college gives the tools but at the end of the day you have to use those tools yeah. you yeah. know you can't just like if you go to school and then you come out not you know using those tools yeah. like, why did you go to school so right. you know if you didn't go to school but you found those tools mm -hmm. and you're now using those tools for me I'm like well you know then school might not be for you I think that when I started getting into painting like some of my family it became more so like family that I didn't really know. Mm -hmm. um, so I was looking, I was digging through crates, looking mm -hmm. at photos, and I was looking at like photos of family members, like on my mom's side, my mom's white, my dad's black. So like I would look at my mom's side of the family and I would see these photos of like grandfathers or you know great grandmothers, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I would just be like, oh, I, I like these poses, but I can't, you know, I can't 100% relate to them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I looked at them, I was like, well, maybe I should put them in my, my gaze, you know, how mm -hmm. I would look at myself, you mm -hmm. know, as a black man. Right. So I started painting 
some of my family members in sort of that, that, that skin tone, that color, just like, you know, putting it up on these paintings. And what I would do is I wasn't focusing more so on the person, but more the figure. And I would take those and just kind of like put that into the work. So it became more so like, um, you know, just referencing, you know, wow. referencing a lot of family members. I and um, I would say too, like, you know, outside of that, just painting friends and family, like if I would just have them come sit for me in the studio yeah. or something. But yeah, how about you? Yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty much um, how I started when I was a kid. Um, my grandmother had a picture of my great grandmother, mm -hmm. and she was the only one with that picture. They had mm -hmm. no other pictures of her. And when I was about when I was in seventh grade, um, I was always sketching something mm -hmm. Bob Marley or or <laughs> something, you know. And my grandmother asked me. She said, "Jamie, you think you could paint? You think you could paint uh, my mom?" Mm -hmm. And I was like. Yeah, I, I, I mean, sketch, yeah. my bad, sketch. I was like, yeah, I could do that. And um, and I did it. And from there, that moment, I might have sketched that that picture five times because mm -hmm. all her sisters wanted one. Because she did it. She wanted to keep the original. So she was like, and at the time, we didn't know that. scanners. I mean, we out in the country. <laughs> we don't know anything about scanners or printers and all that. We didn't have that at the time. So it was just more of like like the old school way of doing things. The and repetition. It, yeah. Yeah. And and since then I was always able to sketch people like because it was helping it was helping so many other people. Right. My mom worked in a nursing home. Some of the 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 older the older people that was there they wanted sketches of their grandchildren. Mm. So I would sketch their, their grandbabies and things like that. So early on, I've always cared about, under, always understood the importance of capturing those moments for people mm. for archival purposes. And I feel like now what I do is I like to take my past and I put my present self there. Mm -hmm. The elements around is the past, but me, I'm here because I'm just reflecting. I'm thinking about the past and things like that, and I'm adding my family in there so they could they could see their past also and right. and things that we've been through and and stuff like that. So I think it's always I think that's important for a lot of figurative artists to you know to just capture now or to capture the past with a little bit of now at the same time. Right, I agree with that because um, I think that you kind of have to go through your history a little bit, even yeah. if it's sort of like indirectly too. Like mm -hmm. you don't have to be like direct about it or you can be direct about it, but mm -hmm. going through that history I think helps set up the, the, the work uh, to move forward, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And I think that that's always like a, a good place to start, you know? Yeah, I feel <laughs> like every artist have some type of selfish reason they're actually painting. Oh, for real, yeah. You know, no and doubt. and it's not a bad thing. It's because you sure. you're doing what's what's best for you at the moment. Because right. you have to do that. You have to take care of yourself. Definitely. You know, you have to look out for yourself. It just so happens people who actually like our mental health work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's <laughs> but it, it so happens people like it and and we get to share it. You know, right. um, but for the most part, I feel like that is the best way. That's one thing I, I learned on my own is as um, long as I paint how I'm feeling, not worried about how it might look on somebody's wall mm -hmm. in somebody's museum, I, I'm not thinking like that. I'm right. just only thinking, paint how I feel and and be done with it. Right. You know, just right. be done with it. That, that, that moment that I'm working Oh, and it's, it's most likely something that's on my mind right then and there. Right. That I need to get out and talk it out with myself. Right. Like face myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it took me a while to, to get to that point because, like I had said, when I went to school, it was all about, like, you know, making the face the face. Yeah. And, right. like, when I had gotten out of school, like you would just say, like, facing yourself. Like, when I... 
look at these paintings and you know they like they're they're like a controlled mess <laughs> you know it's like uh they, they 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 have all this like paint just sticking out on them and you know splatters and stuff yeah. like that and that in my that's almost like my way of facing myself yeah. as well because i'm like i like that you and know? your true identity my you know? true identity yeah. and that's you know that type of painting is my true identity and right. i'm starting to find that yeah. just recently yeah it's so the best feeling. yeah it's the best <laughs> it's the best feeling and people wonder how you paint you could paint so many of them yeah it's because yeah. it's easy when you're being yourself mm -hmm. it's like it's it's no brain it's easy for you absolutely it's, it's like you know it's what you love to do it's not a job no more yeah. But when somebody's trying to tell you and sway you to paint a certain way or do something a certain way, it becomes a job. Right. When you get in the studio and you decide that, you know, I'm going to paint this shit how, I'm going to paint this how I want to paint yeah. it. <laughs> and if I make a mess, it's going to be a mess. But yeah. at the end of the day, when I walk upstairs or when I walk away from my studio and I go home, I'm good. Yeah. I mean, I that feel good. That that also like that's kind of like with me when I was when I was working with airbrush, I tried air. I, I ended up getting oh, yeah. an airbrush on eBay because I kept seeing all this airbrush work and I was like, that's so cool, yeah. you know. And I got this airbrush on eBay and I was trying it out and I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it just what and I and I had to really put it to myself. It's like, you know, it's not me. Yeah, it's, it's not. not it's not me. And. I had to find that out, and yeah, so you right. know, I ended up giving that airbrush to like a studio mate. It was like, "Hey, mm. you want this?" And he's like, yeah. "Yeah." But I started to find like it's like no, it's like the the, the, the materiality of like just paint is yeah. like that's me. So facing yourself, yeah, that's that's gotta super be, important. You gotta be honest with yourself. Absolutely. And if you can't be honest with yourself, you can't expect nobody else to to really understand your work or yourself. I, I I guess you know challenging yourself in works. Like for me, it was the oil pastels at first. Like I had started doing oil pastels in uh, college, and um, I just really like made you know adult crayons, bro. Like, yeah, right, right. <laughs> like I said, go back to your childhood. Exactly. You become the best artist ever. <laughs> yeah. And it just started to become like really like it started resonate with me. Mm -hmm. And the paintings have always been a problem for me because. You know, I tried to, like I said in, in, in school, I tried to make these like realistic uh, poems. Yeah. And they weren't really hitting the way that I wanted them to hit. Mm -hmm. um, and the, but these oil pastels and oil stick works that I started doing, like I started finding something in them. Mm -hmm. And then I kept thinking, it's like, oh, well, you know, I want to make bigger work. You know, I think okay. that that's what a lot of artists want to do is they want to make something bigger. Mm -hmm. And I tried with oil sticks tried to you know make it bigger and, and that just didn't work out very not well enough oil sticks. not <laughs> enough oil sticks you know oil sticks were expensive too mm, yes. and you know you gotta like think about it it's like i gotta revert back to oil paint so you know what's the next best thing bigger brushes um right. and that's you know challenging yourself i just was like i'm gonna go back to these oil paints mm -hmm. and i'm gonna you know try to look at these drawings that i've done instead of like looking at the reference, uh, like if I had a photo reference, I yeah. might draw it first, you okay. know? And then I would look at the drawing and not the photo reference yeah. and try to, you know, reveal something in the painting from the drawing yeah. instead. Um, but I think that that, you know, mentality is challenging yourself. You mm -hmm. know, you're, you're challenging that first thing that you liked and you're like, all right, so how do I continue to like push this? How do I continue to make this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. Cause uh, just like you said, how you look at your sketches, um, myself, every night I look at my paintings. Mm. Like, well, for one, I never want anybody to say, oh, this painting looks like such and such. Yeah. <laughs> so what I, I've, one thing that I've learned to do is Every night, I study my own work. Mm -hmm. I look at my work, and I and that's how that challenge come within myself. Cause I'm like, man, once this painting is gone, like, can I paint something like this again? Yeah. Like, man, I gotta get, you know. So, I challenge myself to to do things um, better than I did last time. Mm -hmm. um, also, I also challenge myself to 
uh, create things that I don't see, I don't have a reference for, it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I never painted grass or trees, mm -hmm. but this series that I'm working on, I wanted to paint grass and trees, but I did not want it to be something that I seen. I wanted it to be something that I could remember. Mm -hmm. And the techniques was all new to myself. I didn't know what I was doing, but I made it the way I saw it. Right. The way I saw it. So some other anybody else might see it and like, well oh, that you know, grass don't really look or uh, trees don't look but to me that's how it looked in my head when I painted it out. Right. You know, so I always try to challenge myself to to uh paint certain things off of memory mm. and uh how I see it at that like when I see it, you know, so and, and I think that that's a great thing, too, with memory, because, you know, it's like we've seen grass yeah, we've seen a grass. million times. Play it, play it, cut it. Yeah. You know. And, you know, it's it's kind of one of those things where it's like we know what grass looks like, you know, yeah. but why do we need a reference? Yeah, exactly. So so that's why when you paint it mm -hmm. the way you think you know it, exactly how it looks, it feels so much better. Yes feels so much better. That's why you struggled with, you said when you was painting realism, right. you was kind of like, oh, it's not really my thing. Because when you close your eyes, you might see it as this. Right, right. You know, you might feel it as this. You know, so it might not be, you might not see it the way a realist painter paints it. You know, like I don't, I don't strive for that either mm -hmm. because I'm not like a big fan of, um, of that that style, right? I'm just a big fan of just painting, right? I don't, I don't, I don't care what it looks like. You could, if you think everybody look like a smiley face, paint a smiley <laughs> face. I don't, yeah. I don't really care. You know what I mean? Right. Like right. a smiley face with an ant leg. I don't know. <laughs> and and I think the the one of the things that I like is is, is fauvism too, where it's like interpretive color. So right. you can you know you know if you want to paint the grass blue, you can paint the grass blue. Yes, you I, can. I, I love I love that you know yeah. I love so I might see like uh, if I'm using a reference, I might see something and be like I don't want to paint it that way. You know what right, I mean? Right. And right. I end up painting it a whole different different right. way. I think that that those choices um, make the paintings interesting and right. you know and again that pushes that sort of like challenge yeah, of yeah. making those works yeah i felt like um the solo show that i did here mm -hmm. was to me my best works so what i did was i started from there and i studied every single one of those pieces mm -hmm. and i know how i felt when i was painting them i remember how i painted them so i just studied that mm -hmm. and and from there, I was growing every time I painted because I would just study from that past. Mm. You know, I was just looking at those. And uh, it's pure, it's, it's a pure me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, Purest form of myself. Yeah, I, I, I love those paintings. I remember seeing those when I first uh, got up here yeah. uh, to Detroit. And one of the things that like really reminded me, those paintings really reminded me of uh, the Baroque period of, of art, which is yeah. that, you know, heavy shadows and yeah. contrast, but in a new way. You know, I was actually looking just recently at uh, Cecily Brown, and oh, yeah. I've been seeing yeah. a lot of her work, and I've been like, man, this, I, I love these paintings. Free, I love freedom. the freedom. They just feel so good. Uh, you yeah. know, and it's just kind of like looking, looking at, like, paint being, you know, paint, for yeah. me, is like really, really yeah. important. So. I have I have one that uh, I did like super abstract. Mm -hmm. I got it tucked away, but if I remember how it made me feel, mm. every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, God, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you deal with the noise? <laughs> how do you deal with the noise? How do I deal with the noise? I, I guess. I guess the noise of the studio and just like when you go into the studio. There are days that, like, when I was in Toledo and I had my studio, mm -hmm. I remember there was, like, a period of me getting out of school, finishing school, and then I was able to get a studio space, and I mm -hmm. got this, like, small studio space downtown Toledo, and I remember 
I would just have some of the worst weeks uh, of painting. I would walk into the studio and I would flip on the lights and I would look at all the paintings in there and I might kick a bucket and walk out. <laughs> I would get mad, I would get very angry, but I think that a lot of that kind of came with, I was, like we had talked about looking at other artists and stuff. I was, a lot, I was comparing myself to a lot of yeah, artists that I that. really enjoyed. And yeah. I kept going like, oh, you know, I want to I want to be like this painter. I want to yeah. be like that painter. And then, you know, the moment I started to just kind of go like, all right, you know, if I get into the studio and I don't like doing a painting or something, I do a drawing. Yeah. If I don't want to do a drawing, I do a painting. Yeah. And I started to get to this point where it's like, even if I don't like the work, you know, if I don't like what came out, I'm just like, I still did something. You still you know? did something. I still did something. So then you come back the next day, and you, you might even have a whole new perspective on that work the next day. Mm -hmm. You know, um, at least for me, sleep is important. <laughs> you yeah. know, I like to sleep, and um, I'm definitely a morning painter. Okay. So that helps me out pretty well. So if I am working until 5, and I don't like what I, I'm like, I need to sleep it off, come back next day. Yeah. My, my whole perspective <laughs> might change. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, myself, um, anytime that I get to my studio, I don't have the idea, I don't go in my studio with the idea of I'm going to paint. Mm. It's just more of, that's my creative space. Right. So I know when I get in there, I'm going to just do something creative. Like, Either I'm going to, uh, either I'm going to sketch, or I'm going to write down some ideas, or I'm mm. going to, you know, not every day I go there to paint. I haven't painted in uh, in two weeks almost, oh, wow. but I've been in my studio every day mm. except this weekend. I've been in there every day because I might have to do stretch bars, I might have to stretch some canvases and things like that. So I just I use that for um, those days where. I might might have a hard time painting because it's like you know what I got so much other stuff going on mm -hmm. up in here it's, you know that as long as I'm here I feel like I did something right. towards the bigger picture you know because I might have didn't paint but I stretched canvases that I know that I'm going to use eventually mm -hmm. I might have cut some stretcher bars that I know I'm going to need eventually right. or I'll spend some time with the paintings, right? Like I've lately, I've been working on um, four or five at a time. Mm -hmm. I get them started, put them to the side. Get them started, put them to the side. Mm -hmm. And then from there, if it's hard for me to paint, I just get in my uh, my roller chair and I just sit with them and mm -hmm. I look at all of them and I just reminisce about the story that I might be telling. And then I might go to one like, oh, I'm gonna add this on here. Mm. But you know, I remember from this to this, this happened. You know, I'm gonna add this on here, and if I just do that, I'm good. I I always think it's funny when people think that when we go into the studio, it's like cutting you know nonstop work. That oh, no. that that ability to sit down out like you have a painting up, mm -hmm. and you might ponder that painting for like. Oh yeah, thirty minutes to an yeah. hour. Yeah, sometimes you can do you can do that too. If you got enough up, you'll do it for a whole day. Yeah, you'll do it for for a whole day. Yeah, because you have to think, right? I get to my studio at nine o'clock every morning. Um, I stay till seven, sometimes ten, and all depends on how much I got going on. Mm -hmm. But in that time, there's so much other things that's going on inside yeah. the studio. <laughs> you know. And a lot of times it's not just painting. Right. It's everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, and you want to spend time with that painting. So it's like, okay, after I finish this, I need to go and sit time, spend some time with this painting. Right. You know, it's like on in the Rothko, right? You can't just look at Rothko and just for five minutes yeah. and walk off. <laughs> you have to really spend time with the painting. You do. You know? So imagine we have a whole bunch of Rothkos. Yeah. You know, of course we're going to spend some time with it, and, and a lot of times we have to spend time with the painting. No, 100%.